Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to speak once again at the uh, Empire Club. It's like David, but I've only been here eight times instead of nine. And I love always following him because then I don't feel like a lone wolf in the wilderness. I have always believed that the future price for gold is best understood through long-term irreversible trends. Today's macro trend changes are part of a looming tectonic shift that started decades ago and is not being adequately reported by the media. So for example, since 2008 financial crisis, the Bank of International Settlements introduced new banking rules to be implemented by 2019. These rules stipulated that gold bullion held in own vaults or on an allocated basis can be treated as cash and therefore risk rated as zero. In addition, the U.S. Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation adopted a new rule in, in August 2012 that also stated gold bullion held in a banking organization's own vault or held in another depository institution's vaults on an allocated basis can be rated as zero percent risk. It will be interesting to see how the Canadian securities regulators reconcile this paradox by forcing retail gold bullion mutual funds to be rated as high risk using standard deviation while the central banks and commercial banks are allowed to rate their gold bullion holdings as risk-free. Under the gold shirias standard, which was adopted at the end of 2016, gold trading has now been approved for the 1.9 trillion Islamic finance industry. The other monumental change is the growing importance of the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The contracts on the new exchange will be physically settled and will be traded between bullion banks, refiners, producers and trading houses. In China, gold is money and is accepted as such by the general population. Gold trading in London, in New York, is really the trading of large quantities of synthetic derivatives, which are completely detached from the physical markets, but which are distorting the price of gold. These derivatives are fractionally backed with about 99% settled in cash. There is no purchase of physical gold. While the ratio varies, it is typically at least 100 ounces of paper gold for every ounce of physical gold. Synthetic paper gold absorbs demand that would otherwise have flowed into the limited physical supply and resulted in much higher prices. In contrast, the Shanghai Gold Exchange is a physical spot price exchange that requires the seller to actually own the physical gold that they are selling. Now, what a novel idea. Physical delivery is the norm, not the exception. The uncontrolled naked shorting of futures contracts, so prevalent on the comics, is not allowed. Sergei Shvetsov, deputy chairman of the Russian Central Bank, recently stated the major gold producing nations are tired of an international gold price that is determined in synthetic trading having little to do with the physical gold market. In November 2017, India, Russia, Brazil and South Africa, which are the major producers and users of gold, have agreed to establish their own gold trading system using their own currencies. This bypasses the US dollar and implementation will begin in 2018. 
while the Chinese central bank holdings remain officially at about 1,800 tons, or only 1.5% of their FX reserves, China's true holdings are unknown. As it acquires its gold through its sovereign wealth fund, which does not report its holdings. A Harvard economics professor, Ken Rogoff, who served as an economist for the IMF, has recommended developing countries should sell U.S. treasuries and buy gold up to 10 percent of international reserves. A number of experts estimate that China already has approximately 6,000 tons. The most important influence in 2018 and beyond is the announcement made in 2017 that China will establish a gold-backed petro yuan. This will allow oil producers to sell oil to China in yuan and then exchange yuan into gold via the Shanghai Gold Exchange. China is the world's biggest importer of oil. And that means that the price of oil will eventually be set, set there, like it or not. Pricing oil in yuan will have a huge impact on the exchange value of the yuan, the US dollar, and correspondingly, the price of gold. Iran, Russia, Venezuela have already agreed to participate and we could s soon see five million barrels a day traded not in U.S. dollars, but in Chinese yuan. Previous attempts to price oil in other currencies were tried by Saddam Hussein and Muammar Gaddafi, and they were disasters for the regime, the leader, and their citizens. However, Russia and China are not the same as Iraq and, our, and Libya. The move away from U.S. dollars is a formal strategy by China and Russia, meant to unseat the U.S. dollar from its dominant position as the world's reserve currency. Russia and China have already set up an international payment system as an alternative to the Belgium-based SWIFT system which has been operating since 1973. The Chinese yuan has been accepted as an 11% component of IMF special drawing rights, which many observers believe is destined to replace the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. They have also set up the Asian Infrastructure Bank and the New Development Bank in direct competition to the IMF and the World Bank, capitalizing it with an initial $100 billion to be used by BRICS developing countries for infrastructure projects like the massive Silk Road project. All this put together is a massive trend change in the financial epicenter moving from west to east and a major pressure on the U.S. dollar continuing as the world's reserve currency. Now, ever since I started our first fund in 2002, there have been many conspiracy theories, even books written, about the suppression of the gold and silver price. In the past, these have been dismissed by the mainstream media as conspiracy theories promoted by gold bugs and organizations like GATA. But now it has become evident that the manipulation of the gold price has moved out of the conspiracy realm and into the mainstream. German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer said that all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. And third, it is accepted as being self-evident. 
The manipulation of the gold price has moved close to the third stage as a recent class action suit for over a billion dollars has been filed in New York and Toronto against the six major bullion banks and has been approved to proceed. Another class action suit is being formed in London. The confirmation of the credibility of these lawsuits is evidenced by the fact that one of the defendants, Deutsche Bank, quickly entered into a settlement agreeing, agreeing to pay 60 million for gold and 38 million for silver, and most importantly, agreeing to cooperate with the plaintiffs. All these will have a major impact on the gold price as the paper price diverges from the physical price. When you consider that there is 55 million ounces of futures contracts with only 1% available for delivery and 248 million ounces of unallocated gold on the LBMA, what could possibly go wrong? This is a chart showing the registered inventories and the line on the bottom, which is almost flat, is the amount of physical gold to back those futures contracts. When I wrote my book, $10,000 Gold, my forecast was based on the positive correlation of the U.S. dollar gold price and the U.S. debt between 1970 and 2010. Since then, the rise of the U.S. debt has accelerated, but the gold price experienced a puzzling correction that was due to the massive, unexplained, naked short sales of COMEX gold. These are just some examples. $2.4 billion in June 17. $2.7 billion in 15, $1.4 billion in 14, $2.1 billion in 13, and $21 billion in 13. This is in a short space of time, often after closing, when there are no participants present in the market. No legitimate trader would ever do this. Draw your own conclusions as to how legitimate this is. Today, to, to normalize the relationship between the U.S. debt and gold, gold should be 1,900 per ounce. When gold is liberated from the paper price, the increase will surpass $10,000 per ounce. Now, while most people find this incredulous, one only has to consider the relative amount of paper, financial assets to physical gold, and mine supply to appreciate how realistic this is. There's about $294 trillion of global financial assets consisting of equities, bonds, and mortgages. All of the gold ever mined in history is 187,000 tons, equal to about 8.5 trillion. ETFs purportedly hold 42 tons of gold. However, this gold is double counted as it has been leased from, authorized, from, from central banks by authorized participants and has counterpart, counterparty claims against these holdings. When you eliminate a religious artifacts, jewelry, and central bank gold, it leaves only about 40,000 tons of gold bullion, equal to about $1.8 trillion. This is how the, break, the breakout looks. Annual mine supply is about 2,800 tons and has been in decline since peaking in 2016 and it's projected that it will decline by 76% by 2020.
by 2029. New mines take about 19 and a half years to get into production. Mm -hmm. And no new major discoveries over 3 million ounces have been made since 2009. As a result, the only adjusting factor for increased demand is an adjustment in price. With a global financial system experience a condition not seen since 1929 of a simultaneous triple bubble in stocks, bonds, and real estate, sitting on a historically unprecedented pile of 270 trillion of unpayable government debt, subprime auto loans, student debt, margin debt, and consumer debt, in addition to a very dangerous mountain of over 600 trillion of derivatives. Conditions are set for a major market correction. This will result in a massive increase in the price of gold as investors flee to his historical safety. So what's the possible increase that can happen? Well, in 1960, sorry, most investors in financial institutions held about 5% of their portfolios in gold. Today, individuals and investors hold less than one half of 1%. If global investors reallocated just 5% of their financial assets to gold, that would be 14.7 trillion of increased demand trying to purchase less than 1.8 trillion of privately held gold. The current price would have to rise by at least eightfold to 10,560 per ounce. However, it was far less than 1.8 trillion of above ground bullion because most of the privately held gold is owned by the world's wealthiest families for generational wealth preservation and is not likely to be sold at any price. When the shift becomes obvious, it'll be too late to purchase the insurance that gold has offered for over 3,000 years. You can't buy insurance during a hurricane. When doing so, it's important that you buy physical bullion and store it on an allocated insured basis and not any paper proxies or derivatives such as ETFs, futures contracts, or certificates. These proxies can defeat the very purpose of holding bullion as there is a very high risk that these instruments will fail at exactly the time when you need your gold the most. As I have said before, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. Second best time is today. Thank you.